up to my youtube channel hi my name is esther ali um a mother a wife and the founder of tajem foods limited um tajem foods it's a bakery a bread bakery here in nigeria where we produce sweet white breads of different varieties and once again i welcome you here as you can tell i'm sure most of you can see i'm very nervous yes i am <laughs> This video actually took me months and weeks in preparation for this, you know, and I'm nervous. Can you tell? I know you can tell. Should I just stop this video and let everybody just go? <laughs> because I don't know who sent me a message. But I'm going to do this. Anyway, guys, let's go ahead. Let's get right into the video. I woke up one day the factory was right in front of my house so i went one day to make some inquiries on if they would let me come and train in their factory and they told me sorry it's not allowed it's against their policy they don't allow people come to train so i said okay so i started thinking which other bakery can i go and then i thought of it i said okay there's a bakery in kubwa can i just maybe i should just go there and make some inquiries and just find out if they will even allow me so that's how i went to the Kuba factory, a bread factory, God bless. In short, I'm going to say the name here because I'm forever grateful to them. Although the owner of the bakeries really do not know me, but the staffs at that time were very helpful. They let me in and eventually I was able to meet the I was able to meet the um owner of the bakery. Spring quality bread. Shout out to you guys. You guys are too much. Spring quality, I'll be forever grateful to you guys. Spring quality bread in Kubwa. You guys are too much you know so i went there i met some of the staff i told them i was on leave how i needed to come and just instead of staying at home and just watching tv and not doing anything let me just come and learn one or two things from their factory and they were like okay no problem but you have to promise us that when you see our yoga you have to like you know shift Ooh, don't worry i said but i don't know your guy they said don't worry when we when he's around we'll let you know so you don't come close because he doesn't really allow people you know outside has just come and i was like okay so that's how i was going there for like some almost one week i kept going there and he didn't he wasn't there so i kept going there for one week and i was learning the whole processes from production to packaging to distribution to marketing to even how they keep their books how the staff resume on a normal day and everything i never told them i was going to start my own bakery guys i never told them <laughs> as at that time i didn't even know i was even going to start mine actually in my heart i actually wanted just wanted to learn something new something different something I, I didn't know anything about i just wanted to learn you know so that's how i was going there every morning i'll resume with them i'll help them in i'll be there when they're producing i watch the whole process wrapping sure i was like a staff to them only that i wasn't being paid you know i was coming there helping them so one of those days i came to the factory not knowing that their ogre was around, their boss, you know, for those, sorry guys, though by, for those of you that are outside the country, when I say ogre, when you hear me say ogre, in Nigeria, when we, we call our bosses ogre, <laughs> our bosses or the owner of wherever we are working, we call them ogre, so you understand, when I say ogre, I mean the boss, the owner of the factory. So he, I didn't know he was around. My usual self, my Jovi self, I was there playing with all the staff, joking with them. I was even packaging bread with them and everything, cracking jokes. I didn't know that. I, I, I noticed that there was a guy staring at me. The guy kept looking at me like, ah, who is this lady? And then I was even pregnant. But my tummy, I was pregnant, but it wasn't so obvious. Unless if you're very observant, then you will know that ah, this lady is pregnant. You know, so I was there with my pregnancy. I was going from one place to the other, helping them to package bread, you know, in my whole normal life living. I didn't know he was the owner of the bakery. So he just kept staring at me. I noticed somebody was staring at me, but later the guy left and went away. I didn't know where he went to. So all of a sudden, the manager wasn't around. The manager ran in and came in and said, Oh my God, madam, did my ogre see you? I said, which of your ogre? No, your ogre wasn't here. He said, no, 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 no. One of our staff just told me now that Oga saw you and he has been asking questions that who is that lady that has been in the production place helping them to or that's when did they recruit a new staff? I said, oh really? Oh, yes, there's a man that was, that's been staring at me but I didn't know that was your boss. <laughs> Guys, 
immediately I ran outside. I sat down to in my mind I was praying. I said, God, let me not put these good people into trouble because you only wanted to help me. Let me not put them into trouble and make them lose their job. So that's why I sat outside. As I sat outside, waiting to hear if, as in to observe what was going on. The, I noticed the man came out, the owner of the bakery, he came out and he said, hello madam how are you i said fine he said what can we do for you what are you doing here and then i was like oh sorry i'm a banker i work with any bank and i'm on leave i i just wanted to just know bakery i i didn't know how bread was made i consume bread a lot in my house and i don't even have an idea of how it's being made and everything and he was like oh that's good that he has been observing me and he saw how hard working and how i've been going from one place he, and he told me and he said you're pregnant right i said how did you know? Because it's not very obvious. It's only people that are very observant that will really notice. He said, and I, I was like, how did you know? He said, yes, it's obvious. I can tell that you're pregnant. I said, yes, I am. Then he now said, ah, you've been jumping up and down. Please, can you just come and sit down? What are, what exactly do you want to learn? I said, nothing. Just, I just wanted to learn the whole bakery process and everything. And then he was like, okay. He said, come in, come in, come with me. I went with him. He Introdu reintroduced me to all the staff that I already knew and told them that look at this lady wants to learn about bread making you guys should tell her everything she needs to know guys that's how I know that God handy that God was working in my favor that thing was not ordinary because most bakeries I went to I've been to like four bakeries and none of them offered none of them wanted to even even tell me anything about bread making because they felt maybe I might be a competitor or a rapper. I don't blame them. Do you understand? But looking back today, being a bakery owner, I don't think I want to be that kind of person. I do want to be that kind of person. Today, I run a bakery. This is more than two years now I've been running this business and I've had so many people come to me that I should teach them about bread making. Trust me, I have a lot of people about bread making and most of these people I have gone for their opening their launching of their bakery I have visited them I am so proud I'm happy to say that I taught them and they have started the business this guy is big for everybody you know now now this is not shade to any bakery I'm not shading any bakery but I just feel if you have knowledge of something share it if you have to charge to share it's good and fine that doesn't make you a bad person if you have to charge good and fine you can charge to make your money but if you don't want to charge you can as well not also charge and decide to impact in other people's life leave a legacy this is these are the kind of legacy we talk about leave a legacy behind so many people have come to my bakery and i have taught for free there's nobody that can tell you that i collected money to teach them about bread making in short, when I finish teaching you, I will encourage you to please go and start up your own. Don't let the knowledge die. Take, take the knowledge you have acquired here. Go start up your own business. You know? So now, this is shout out to Spring Quality Bread. Hmm. You guys are too much. Okay. So back to my video. I just wanted to share a brief, you know, a brief um, knowledge of how I actually started. After I got that training from Spring Quality, I went ahead, I came back, I told my, I did the training for like, for I think one month, yeah, for one straight month, I was going to that bakery to learn all about bread making and everything. By the time I was done with it, I was well equipped. I knew everything, you know, from start to finish. So I told my husband that I've learned everything, now I'm ready to kick start my own bakery. It took me one month. You know, I'm a fast, I'm a sharp girl. Yeah. I'm very smart, guys, so I know. <laughs> I'm very sharp. So it took me one month to start up and immediately my husband and I sat down. We started writing all that is required to start a bakery, the equipment, the everything, everything. And that's how we started, guys. You know, with the help of my husband, I was able to buy some equipment. And with the help of, I didn't tell you guys, guys, I, I didn't tell you guys another part. I had to also, those equipments are expensive. I also had to take a loan to get some of those equipments. It's not a joke. I spent over... Let me not go there. But anyway, that was how the bakery started. And today, the bakery is gradually becoming a household name in Abuja. To God be the glory. I give God the glory. You know? So, in this video today, I'll be taking you guys on the 
for those of you that are out there that want to start your own bakery, I want to use this opportunity to take you on the steps on starting your own bakery, your own business in Nigeria. So one of those steps, just like I said, is learning. You have to learn. I had to go and learn. You know, I have to learn. Even if it, it must not even be bakery, any any business you want to venture into, the first thing you need to do is learn. Learn about that trade. Learn about that business. You have to learn. You know, don't just jump right into it. Then when you are done learning, the next step is to register your business. Huh? You register your business. You go to CAC and register that business. Corporate um, CAC does the Corporate Affairs Commission. You go and register. And then when you're done registering, you know what registration helps you? It helps you to kickstart your brand. You know, because um, you, don't, you don't want a situation where you have a name and by the time you go to CAC, they tell you, oh, sorry, this name already exists, so you can't use this name and everything. And you want to be registered so that you can be, actually be legal. You can do business legally in Nigeria because if you're not registered, you can't do any business legally. So another option is after you register, you need colors. In this, in this industry, you need colors. You need to differentiate your brand. You need to differentiate your product from that of other. Of such ways of doing that is by signing a color to your business. Now, there are different colors. You know, because this is a bread industry where, you know, it has to do with food, what people consume. So you need inviting colors. You need colors that depict deliciousness, yumminess, you know. So you need very attractive colors like cream, yellow, orange, light blue, and all that, you know. So when you're done selecting a color for your brand and registering your business, the next step, guys, is try and get NAVDAC registration number. You need NAVDAC registration number. I had my fingers beaten when I first started because I got out, I wanted, I was trying to register the product with NAVDAC and it took me like two months to get it registered. I got tired of waiting, you know, so I had to begin to even sell some of my product without the NAVDAC registration. But I realized that without that NAVDAC registration, some retailers are reluctant to take your product. They don't want to even take your product. Some will tell you, does it have, you know, when they come, they, they are willing to buy you. But the first question they will ask you is, I hope it has a um, NAVDAC number. Because even they too, they too don't want to get into trouble. They do not want to get into trouble with NAVDAC. Because NAVDAC can actually come and seize their products or close down the shop for selling products that do not have NAVDAC number especially here in abuja abuja is highly regulated it's not like other parts of nigeria where you know some things can just fly like that you can just go like i heard in lagos people sell bread on the street of lagos without now that registration number now in abuja here you can't try that too hey if you try that they will look for you uh -huh. or that doesn't mean that it's still in this abuja there are not people that sell bread without navdac number there are people that still sell bread without navdac number but it's it's rare trust me unlike Lagos or other parts of Nigeria. It's really rare. So here in Abuja, if you're going to set up in Abuja here, you need NAVDAC registration. It cannot be overemphasized. I don't know how to even say it. You need to be ready. And now how do you do this? All you need to do is, now it's even easier. When I first started, it was paperwork. Paperwork, you fill so many documents, you show you, there's so many back and forth, not back and forth with NAVDAC. Any little error like this, you go to NAVDAC, they'll tell you your R is not supposed to be R, it's supposed to be Q. You made a mistake, you go back, you correct it, you reprint. You know, you go back and forth, back and forth. I remember going back and forth, but it was easier for me because I had a family friend that works, that works in NAVDAC. He made it very easy for us, you know. Ken, no. <laughs> you know, I must give you a shout out in my video. You are too much, guy. Ken, oh no, he's my family friend and he works in NAVDAC. He was the one that actually made it very easy for me. You know, he, he saw most of the documents. He was the one that helped to arrange some vital documents that were required by NAVDAC. So, you know, okay, I cannot do this video without giving you a shout out. I must give you a shout out. Okay, no, no, I must give you a shout out. Thank you, guy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, bros. You did so well for me. So, and then after you get your NAVDAC, now it's easier, like I was saying, it's easier to get NAVDAC registration number. Now everything is done online. Just upload your documents online and voila. You know, you're on your, your, your way to getting your NAVDAC registration number. It's far easier now and it's even cheaper. Unlike when I registered. When I registered, I registered with almost 
a hundred and something thousand now it's far cheaper now they've made it very cheap you know you know because i think this present government is trying to encourage entrepreneurs entrepreneurs in nigeria so they have i think they've slashed the prices of of the registration then when you're done with your navdac registration number guys the next thing you need to do is your equipment now bakery equipment are not cheap guys they're expensive oh. but that doesn't mean you cannot start with cheaper ones there are ones that you can buy that are fabricated when i mean nav um, bakery equipment are not cheap they run into thousands and millions of naira a bread you can be hearing to buy a mixer alone can cost you almost one point something million and it depends on the kind of mixer if you're buying that's if you're buying a half bag mixer if you're buying a one a full bag mixer huh, you can run up to two point something million no? my brother my sister so it's not cheap you know but they can also fabricate it for you it can be fabricated those are fabricated it's not it's not as a, it's not even up to a million naira at all it can be fabricated and then another thing you want to do also is okay for the bakery for the equipment i'm going to make another video for you guys where i'll be sharing with you guys the equipments you need to start your business to start your bakery business as in i will state everything all the big all the equipment you're going to need you know from the oven the mixer the molder the the cutter the slicer you know everything you're going to need but that doesn't mean you need all the equipment there's some equipment you can do without especially if you're starting on in, on a small scale there are some equipment you can do without for example the molder you can actually mold with your hand you don't really do not need a molder only that when you have the molding machine it makes it faster for you you know and it makes it it makes the job easier for your staff so when you're done with your equipment i will the next step is um begin to gather your staff teamwork is very important you need teamwork in this business okay no before i say you begin to gather your staff you need to join an association a trade union that's very important you need to join a trade union now what does this trade union do for you trade union is very important because you cannot be an island on your own you know this trade union consists of different bakery owners around you it depends on your state like in abuja i'm a member of the abuja master bakers you know and this union has really helped me in a way that like when i want to hire my staff most times all i need to do is go on the whatsapp group or make a phone call across the union chairman and tell them oh i need so and so i need a baker i need a mixer i need a driver i need a marketer and before you say voila somebody they've already made it open They'll make the announcement and before you know they've sent somebody to your bakery you know and they, they can even help you do the underground check-ins like help you check that this person is actually a good person that can work with you not a froster and everything then another thing if you eventually if in case you employ someone that is a froster why this union is important if in, in case you employ someone that is a froster the person leaves your bakery the person cannot work in any other bakery in abuja here that's how effective the master baker is the person cannot get any other job why because they will publish his face all you, they just need you to do is report the case to them they will publish his face on the whatsapp group everybody gets to know him they know his name so any bakery he goes to in short he can be captured there and they will make a public announcement that oh the guy that that defrauded susan so bakery has been caught to his susan so here he's been captured here you know he's in our bakery right now we have captured him you know that's how the, the union works in unison they work as one like a family yes we are competitors we are all uh, competitors to each other but we still find a way to you know to to come together as one then another yes, thing need information you need you need to be you need to be up to date with happenings the trends are happening in the industry for example there's been a consistent rise in price in raw materials you know that way all the bakery owners get to come together and say look because of this increase in price we i think we need to increase the prices of our bread on the shelf so that there's no situation where i'm selling my bread for so and so amount another bakery is selling cheaper and everybody leaves my own bread and they go to buy from that person so for that reason that's why the union is very important because with that union we all come together and agree on a particular price you know although there are some instances where so the union some some members are very stubborn 
you know, after we've all decided on our price, you still find some going behind the back and still selling cheaper. But it's on, uh, uh, but when they find out about those people, they usually sanction them. That's the good part with this union. They usually sanction them and you can't sell above the price that has been stated that each bakery should sell. So another thing I also want to talk about when you join the trade union, which is very important, then you need to gather your staff. I wanted to mention that earlier, but now I'm going to mention it here. You need to gather your staff. Teamwork is very important. You can't do the job alone. That's the truth. You see this bakery business. If you say you want to do it alone, you will collapse. You will just faint. You can't do it alone. So all you need to do is gather staff. In the bakery, you need nothing less than three staffs. I'm telling you, two staffs alone cannot do the job. Or neither can only you do the job. So you need nothing less than three staffs or more to get the job done. To, to be able to produce at... So that you don't end up doing night work. You don't end up working into the night. You know? So, initially, when I first started, I used to be jack of all trade. I would produce. I would market. You know? I would do the bookkeeping. I would, it was tiring. Every day and then, if I opened up today, in two days' time, I'm already tired. I've closed the bakery. I say, you know what? Everybody knows I'm tired. But when I started diversifying, when I started... When I started creating, when I, when I started division of labor, I had to get more hands. And then I said, you, you are in charge of production. You, you are in charge of packaging. You, you are in charge of bookkeeping. You, you are in charge of marketing. You know, it made it very easy. In short, right now, as I speak to you, I have removed my hand completely from the bakery. I practically don't do anything there. Or the only thing I do there is when I come in the morning, I only supervise what they are doing. I practically don't do anything anymore. They are the ones that handle it from start to finish. Now, what did I do? I had to train them. That brings me to my number one point. Remember when I told you guys that you have to learn this business. You have to learn it. That's the number one thing. So now, remember now, before anybody comes to work in my bakery, I have to train you. You have to know the job. You have to know exactly how I want you to do things. Yes, I might hire you as an experienced hand. And it could be that those same equipment, you've been using them in other bakeries. But they might be slightly different. And you might not know how I operate my, in my own bakery. So when you come, I have to train you. That's why you have to learn about your equipment. Learn about the trade. Learn about your recipes. Learn about everything. So now, everybody, I have someone that is in charge of my recipe. If I see my recipe anywhere, he, in short, he, signed, he has signed a, a, a non-disclosure form. The moment my recipe goes out, I find somebody else doing my recipe. I know he's the one. We signed a non-disclosure form in court. I had to do that, you know. So if I see my recipe anywhere, I know he's the one that did that. Then another thing also is in terms of bookkeeping. Your bookkeeping is very important. In short, that's the lifeline of your business. If you're not keeping your books, trust me, you're just wasting your time in this industry. There's no point. Just, just make bread and share and give everybody and say, you know, all of you should just come and eat and go. You know, bookkeeping is very important, guys. So when you're done with your with uh, uh, organizing your team, the next thing you need to do is you begin to buy your pan, your work tables, you know, your scaling machines. Those are part of the equipment I was talking about that you're going to need. Your scaling machines, you know, you need all those things. Your packaging material, your label. Now your label, your label and carrier bags. These are what you use to package your bread. When they see outside, that's what they see. They don't even see the content of the bread. It is the carrier, it is the bread label that will tell them whether they should buy this bread or not. So if your bread label is very attractive, you're on a good, you, you, you have a good product, you know. So there are so many more things I'm going to be sharing with you guys as, as we make more videos. There are so many things I'll be sharing with you guys. So please like the channel subscribe and please 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 guys click on the notification bell so that anytime i post new videos you'll be one of the first people to know about it you know thank you guys for supporting your girl more videos will be coming i'll be sharing more light on more equipment so if you know anybody around you that want to start up a bakery please share this video with them that at least they'll be able to learn one or two things from me you know thank you guys ciao